to the podcast, which does not have a name yet. Podcast with no name today. Uh, it's Mike, and I'm here with... Jay is in the house. And we're here to talk about... I don't know, a good question is money. Where do you put it when it seems like all the assets are high and unsustainable? So we'll turn it over to you, Jay. Where, where do you put your money? Uh, we're not giving investment advice, by the way. Disclaimer. Yep. No investment advice here today, but uh, we find ourselves in a very, very interesting last month of 2018 when we're recording this podcast. Um, you know, I'm in real estate. Um, I have a decently sized portfolio, um, and I am right now for the most for the first part of my life mostly in cash, and it's pretty amazing for me to say that because I'm a big believer um, in the, in the, you know, the value of compounded interest and obviously, you know, growth of assets over time. But man, I look around and I look at real estate, you know, being in the real estate market, like Southern California, the market already peaked early in 2018. And since June, you know, Mike and I can show anyone data that shows that we're already in a pretty precipitous decline, the most since actually 2009 or 2010, um, you know, which is literally almost 10 years ago. So it's pretty interesting to look around. You know, we could also talk about, you know, the cryptocurrency market for all those poor people that have held on to their, you know, blockchain currencies. And, you know, there's over 1,800 cryptocurrencies now. They've all been absolutely decimated this year. Um, and then, you know, my, my take, you know, and Mike can expound on if he wants, but my take with the equity markets, with just the general equity markets, is that um, it's the majority of money in there right now is baby boomers. You know, they're still the, ma the majority of wealth, um, you know, propagators in the planet and they do not understand cryptocurrency worth a damn. And obviously their investment advisors and, and financial analysts don't either. And they obviously tell them to stay away from that. Um, and if any of their analysts or investment advisors are worth a, you know, a damn, they're clearly telling them not to be in real estate in any of the major markets. Um, because it's topped out. So it's a very weird time, you know, strange days, as I would say, because it's very difficult to understand where to put your money. Yeah, I don't have a good answer for it, um, other than which is the right answer. You're never going to be able to buy at the top. You're never going to be able to, uh, rather, you're never even going to buy at the bottom, sell at the top. Right. For example, with crypto, a lot of people say to me, oh, you must have bought like a ton, you know, you must have lost a ton of money in crypto and Bitcoin and everything. And that's because they are not enlightened. They don't know about dollar cost averaging. And they right. assumed that I bought crypto for the first time at 10,000. Right. But if I bought some crypto at 10,000, some at 15, but I had also bought some at 500, then there's an average cost basis to all the investments. So people don't even know. And the, the, a lot of people, for example, who lost their shirts, they never bought into crypto until it went on that ride. And then they bought in heavily. That's the number one investment mistake people make is they say, oh, this is hot. But by the time you know something is hot, you have to be really careful to to jump in because you're not, you don't have that first mover advantage. And that's why for me, the, and by the way, with investing, even investing in yourself and businesses, there are no guarantees. Right. For me, the best investment ever is you keep your cash and you invest in yourself and people can say it's cliche and I don't really care because it's the one investment that works. And, and obviously, if you have a 401k, you max that out. If there's an employer match, there's the typical advice. But the number one mistake people make is they don't invest in themselves. They don't take courses. They don't learn. They don't learn new skills. And then they get kind of tossed out when, when the market tanks. You can also invest in a side hustle, a small business. Everybody who has a job, whether you like it or not, you have to have two jobs. You have to have your nine to five and then your five to nine and your five to nine is your side hustle. And how do you do it all if you have kids and everybody else? Uh, welcome to the new world. Um, I don't know how anybody does. I work every day. It's Sunday. Um, I'm working. been doing streaming and podcasts all day and my daughter's in the, you know, the other room with my wife and we're about to get food and I'll work later tonight. And last night I was up late. So I don't know what to tell you. Um, if you're worried about a work-life balance, those days are gone and you better adapt to the new reality. Yeah, very well said. Um, you know, Mike's 100% right. Listen, the only thing that you can truly invest in and get an absolutely exponential return is yourself, okay? And that comes in the form of you being in good shape, being healthy, being of the right mindset. You know, um, it's all 
the most imperative and most or most important thing and, and should be your you know your your overriding you know prerogative in your life is and that is to take care of yourself so that you know you live a long productive life and that in that time that you're productive you can do a lot a lot of things you know great many things hopefully but mike's right i mean I look at my own life right now and, you know, I have a residential real estate company with my wife and, you know, we're modestly successful in Southern California. And, you know, I'm looking at a market right now where interest rates have come up, prices have topped out um, because of the interest rate, you know, uh, turn in the last eight years where, you know, the Federal Reserve kept rates pretty much stable and suppressed through qualitative easing. There's no way they can do that again. So if I'm looking at things, you know, accurately and from a realistic perspective, I have to recognize that for the next two to three years and possibly a little bit longer, um, real estate is going to be suppressed. There's not going to be a lot of money in real estate. Now, that doesn't mean that there are angles because there are angles. I mean, you know, if if what me and Mike thinks think happens soon, which is, you know, we're facing another, you know, massive economic decline, how significant no one really knows. But I mean, you know, you can read the tea leaves. I mean, you, you know, you can look at debt. You can look at, you know, all the other indicating signs. I mean, you know, the market right now is a t- is essentially a tulip mania market because of baby boomers money in the equity markets. There's really no r- reason or justification for them to be as high as they are other than that ma- assets are there. So, you know, educated, you know, educated guess or, you know, just being smart and, you know, understanding what's going on. You got to realize there's going to be a dip. So being in shape, um, being, you know, ready to adapt as, you know, we talked about in a previous podcast that's most crucial right now because there's just no way to predict the future as as things are so seemingly unbalanced on planet earth right now in so many different ways you know we you just don't know what's going to happen but you definitely definitely have to invest in yourself and in my opinion that's taking care of your physical health you know making sure that your mindset's right making sure that every day you wake up you're happy and you're passionate and you feel good about what you're doing but that to me and I agree hundred percent with Mike is investing in yourself. You know, as he said, taking more courses, figuring out additional side hustles, figuring out ways to partner with other people. That is by far the best thing you can do right now. There, it is a mess. It, it truly is. And the, the theme of this podcast is going to be the yin and yang of optimism and peptimism, pessimism. I just said peptide probably because <laughs> I need some freaking peptides. I need to go to my doctor and, you know, get something for the old, the old joints, but it it is the yin and yang, the optimism of pessimism and optimi- optimism, because I believe in everyone listening to this. I believe in everyone really trying to strive and make gains. I do not believe in modern society. I do not believe in Western society. I do not believe the arc of the world is bending in the right direction. It is bending in the wrong direction. Yes. So I am systemically optimi- or systemically pessimistic. And individually, I am optimistic, well but I'm only optimistic if you are, you're thinking about these questions. You're, you're thinking about what does it mean to invest in yourself? You're thinking about the edge, how you're going to have an edge cognitively, physically. You're, you're thinking of your place in the world in a very, very active way. If you're not, it's over is over there's no way to say it. the the system is failing if you don't see that we're an empire in decline yes then i don't know i don't know what to do for you you shouldn't be on this podcast go listen to some you know pollyanna podcast because that's not the truth but the other side of that is 50 years ago if you wanted to live an amazing unimaginable life it almost wouldn't have been possible there were too many gatekeepers, too many barriers to entry. So the world is falling, but you are rising. Well, very, very well said. I mean, I mean, just look around. I mean, we are in a world right now where debt levels are at stratospheric. If I just made up a word, good for me. Don't call myself Don King. But we, we are just, nothing is sustainable and supportable, you know, from a, measure, a measurable metric anymore. And so you have to be aware of that and you have to recognize that, as Mike said, you know, all great empires decline and the United States, the Western world is in decline right now. I mean, just look around. I mean, again, we won't have to go you know, down the rabbit hole any further. It's just obvious. It's so many, you know, economic and leading indicators that show it. I mean, you know, again, being in real estate, I see people buying 
you know, million dollar houses with $40,000 in cash reserves and less, you know, two, a mom and a dad or a husband and wife, you know, making 180 to $200,000 a year in combined income. And they don't really, you know, technically make enough money or have the cash reserves to even purchase the house. And yet the lenders, you know, Wall Street, the banking institutions, you know, the people that run all that stuff, um, they're still lending the money because again, at the end of the day, everything has got to keep moving. You know, the circle's got to keep spinning. I mean, the wheels got to keep spinning in this global economy. So, you know, Mike is right. You know, you have to take a realistic perspective. Perspective. You cannot be Pollyanna. You have to invest in yourself. You have to have an open eye. You know, you have to be aware. I mean, you got to recognize that we are in, as Mike said, a completely different world, a world probably that maybe has never, ever been like this with technology um, changing the way we exist and the cha- change the way we think. But that doesn't mean that you can't figure out a strategy um, to improve yourself, obviously, and improve your economic prospects. I mean, again, it takes work. It takes a focus. It takes a drive. I mean, you know, we talked a little bit about this in our previous podcast, but there's never been, in my opinion, a better time, even though we live in a time that is completely um, unstable. And, you know, if there, if there was ever a time that we could say we're on shaky grounds, it's now. But at the same time, if you look at things from a perspective of like, wow, this is such an amazing time to be alive. I mean, I can't imagine another time when it was like this. No, and I don't want to be, you know, too crude or anything, but people who want to figure out life really can figure out life. And that's why when people ask me for general general advice, I just can't give it because I, I don't know the person's position, but I do know that there are people living nice lives, unimaginable lives all over the world, and you realize they're playing the game of a geo arbitrage or they're making dollars and they're spending foreign currency. For example, I, when I went to Cape Town a couple of years ago, I had no idea what a, a joy it was living there. And sure, it's dangerous and blah, blah, blah. But there is about a 3x gain on your money. So if you make, I don't know, $50,000 on an online business and you live in Cape Town, that's the equivalent of one hundred twenty dollars to $150,000 in the U.S. Amazing. And you don't even learn this in college. Nobody in any kind of mainstream podcast is telling you this. You go out and you rent is cheaper. You go out and you have a wonderful dinner by the waterfront with a glass of wine, entree, $13. Any way you price something, you're almost at a 3X arbitrage. So you, people aren't telling you, hey, find a way to make, you know, because everybody wants to sell you on the get rich thing. Yeah. Oh, go make millions on the internet. Well, first of all, you're, you're almost not. I don't make millions on the internet and I'm, you know, pretty high up the, the food chain or whatever. But if you make tens of thousands and then you play the geo arbitrage game and you live elsewhere, but then people go, eh, but I don't want to do it and everything else. But you know, you know, people who cry really shouldn't be listening to the podcast. It's people who are hard hitters and want to make moves in life that should, and you go live somewhere else. And but that was not possible fifty years ago. No. Fifty years ago, you had to get a job, you had to live your life a certain conformist way, you had to, you know, sort of conform to a monoculture. That's why I always laugh. Uh, you know, this is a not a political podcast, but it's, I always laugh when people claim to know my politics when, in fact, <laughs> I found the monoculture of the Midwest oppressive. I couldn't wait to, to get out to California, but now I find the monoculture of left wing orthodoxy oppressive. And so if you lived in a certain time, there was no escape. You just, you were, you were caught up in the 50s. So you had to live a certain life, but now you can say, Hey, like even me, if I wanted to move with my family, I could take them somewhere else. Now, there are, there are reasons that I live where I live and why I do what I do. But if you are somebody with no ties, you just find another way to do it. And that goes back to, again, the, the podcast we were talking about, skills you have to learn. You have to be on the edge and you really have to be learning everything out there about everything. And that sounds vague because it is vague. You have to learn about what does geo arbitrage mean? Well, you know, there are any number of terms. One is, you know, currency trading. But everyone who, for example, I lived in Vietnam, I, I was paid in U.S. dollars. And I uh, don't laugh, but the Vietnamese currency is a dong. So I made dollars and I spent dongs. That was yep. a form of, of geo-arbitrage. When I was in South Africa, I think the currency is rands. I took dollars that I made and I spent rands. And that was like 2x, you know, 3x gain. Those are the types of conversations that you should be having with other people, and that's the kind of research you could be looking into. Because, for example, the best the best investment a person might make 
is if you have a job that's somewhat location independent, get the heck out of the U.S. You're, you're going to double your money right there overnight. Dude, absolutely. You just stole my thunder. You know, there's no question. You know, my wife and I have been very blessed since 2016. We've been traveling around the world. I have not been living in other countries like Mike was um, because, again, of our real estate business, we are somewhat, um, you know, location specific. But we're really close and on that path to getting to where we're non-location specific and I can be a total laptop entrepreneur. And that should be, in my opinion, right now, knowing what we know about this planet, knowing the destabilization of the West, that should be everyone who listens to this podcast goal. You should be developing skill sets that allow you to make money while you sleep, making recurring revenue, earning money wherever you are in the world, automated fashion that you don't have to worry about that you don't have to put time into sure you're gonna have to build that to get it to that point and that's going to require a lot of time and a lot of intelligent you know work and investment but once you get it to that point you can live wherever you want and mike is absolutely right if you live in the united states especially a coastal population center which clearly is failing. I mean, if you haven't been to California, like LA or San Francisco, I mean, you know, again, Alexander wrote something about the other day about San Francisco. San Francisco is a rotting cesspool, okay? A major metropolitan urban city is now in total decline and decay. And people have to recognize that that is what is happening in a lot of the major cities. So if you're in those cities, your game right now should be figuring out how you're gonna get out and where you're going to go. And again, obviously you've got to be able to make money. So if you're going to be living in Mexico on a beach or in Thailand, as Mike said, practicing geo arbitrage, which you easily can. I mean, guys, you could, if you make $5,000 a month, Mike, I mean, imagine how you can live in Thailand or Vietnam, right? So you need to be planning your exit if you are seeing things for the way they truly are. Well, the number one conversation that I have behind the scenes with the the real you know movers of the world uh, is like where are you going to go? Exactly. Nobody, and this is why people I'm pessimistic about America and the future of the West is nobody comes to America and says, "Oh my God, can you believe it's the future?" Friends of mine go to Japan, like, "Oh my God, have you ever been to Japan? It's like the future." Have you been to Singapore? Have you been here? Have you been there? Nobody is having this conversation. And by the way, if you're a um, yeah, I don't want to say regular person because I don't like the, the connotation of that. But if you're not someone plugged into elite thinking, I can tell you this is a question people are having. Nobody is saying, oh, my God, America's great. Everybody's saying, well, where are the people going to go when it all falls down? That's the way the very most successful people in America, that's what they're thinking. That's what they're talking about. And that. so, again, that, that goes to show uh, they all want you to put your money into certain asset classes. And maybe there's a reason Maybe there's a reason that they want you to do that because somebody has to be caught holding the bag. Yeah. I mean, it's, again, these are, you know, this is an awesome podcast. You know, I know in my opinion, I'm sure Mike shares with me because we're talking about things that very few people are willing to talk about guys. But, you know, again, the writing is on the wall. We are looking at a nation in decline. We are looking at an educational system that is failing. We are looking at university systems that are essentially at this point, progressive indoctrination camps. I mean, it is a crazy place to try to raise a family. So if you really are thinking, you know, between reading between the lines and thinking big picture, you have to start at least in the back of your mind, focusing on a big picture strategy. And again, in my opinion, a big picture strategy for everyone should be to be able to be non-location specific, to have recurring revenue, recur, you know, multiple diverse income streams, all obviously most likely from the internet or from some sort of internet marketing hustle um, but again, there's many ways to do this. It get, you just have to be creative with your thought processes and you have to, you know, again, you know, get outside of your sandbox, you know, challenge your thoughts, you know, reach out to people who are not, you know, in your Rolodex or in your circle and find people of like mind who can actually encourage you and mentor you. You know, we're not even talking about mentorship in any of the podcasts that we did today, but it's very simple and easy to find people to mentor you today, you know, just hunt them down and, 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 and then offer value. You know, like Mike always says, you know, Mike and I have had many people reach out to us online, you know, over the last 10 years and say, Hey man, I got an idea or Hey man, blah, 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 and you know, just run their mouth and it's nonsense. But when you, you know, reach out to us and you offer us an actual solution and you show us like step by step and not only say show us, but say like, Hey man, I'll be happy to meet you and I'll show you how this works. That's the kind of stuff that we're looking for. Are you that type of resource that you can then, you know, 
you know, for find a mentor, someone way higher level than you, but because you're such a value to that person, they take you in under the wing because sometimes all it takes is one conversation with someone above you and your whole life changes. Yeah, there, there's, again, so much you have to look at, so many angles. You, ha- you have to be so active. And, and that's, too, another, the, the doomsday geopolitical, you know, everybody's been a doomsday theorist and I've actually not been a doomsday theorist. I used to make fun of people like Rubini because they would say, oh, the market's going to collapse. And, the, and then, you know, they're wrong for 20 years. And finally it does. They go, oh, I'm the man who predicted the housing crash. No, you weren't. You weren't because you would have shorted it like, like exactly. Paulson and other people did if you, you know, read the, the big short. No, no, you're, you didn't. You just are a doomsday prophet. And I've always been an anti-doomsday prophet. But when you look at the, the broader trends, you look at... The fact that everybody listening to this, to really understand it, this is a higher IQ audience. What are, what are people who could never, and this is, by the way, reality, there are people who are just never going to be able to figure out certain things in life. Well, what's going to happen to them with automation and the, the major issues coming on? They, they really are done. But that's why people who are empowered, you have to empower yourself, get off your butts, this whole, I have no patience for this whole, what do I do? When do I move? The time to move was years ago. Yes. The second best time is now. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know how we could wrap it up with anything better than what Mike just said. I mean, again, you guys, you got to have both eyes open. You know, as the ancient hermeticists always say, you know, you have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. And Mike is absolutely right. You know, that time has already happened Um, this is a a nation that is not in its best of times right now, but there's always a way for you as an individual to make it the best for you. And obviously it takes work. It takes effort and it takes again, two eyes open and two ears willing to hear because that's the only way you're going to get ahead in today's day and age. There's nobody that's going to give you an edge. It takes a lot of effort. And again, a very calculated risky gamble, not a gamble, but just, you have to be able to take risks. It's that simple. You know, Mike's talked about that on his previous podcast and a lot of things he talked about, you know, few people today are willing to take a chance or to, to engage in a risky behavior, but no one of any substance or a claim or influence has ever gotten to where they are without taking a risk. It's literally inboard into the genetic code to be able to get to that point. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening in. If you know what we should name our podcast, let us know. Otherwise, I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care.